I'm Liz, and this is Dennis, and we live and travel full-time in our tiny home on wheels, Maggie. Over the past few weeks, we've hiked snow-capped mountains and relaxed along the shores of Lake Tahoe on our road trip out west. And this week, we make it to the moody shores of the Oregon coast, where we drive one of the most scenic highways in the country, the Pacific Coast Highway. Subscribe to join us as we find fantastic food. Oh my god. Get close to nature. Oh. Oregon will keep you on your toes. Well, I think that is the closest we've gotten to a seal in the wild. And enjoy epic beach rent camping along the way. Our journey up the Oregon coast started from the south, making our way from Brookings toward Bandon. Our first stop was at one of the many scenic overlooks along the PCH, Natural Bridges, a beautiful cove home to two natural bridges that were formed from the shifting of the sea and stone over thousands of years. We continued our drive along the coast, passing loads of trails, vista points, and beaches, stopping periodically to take in the striking beauty of the coast. One stop was Cape Sebastian State Park, named after a Spanish conquistador that explored the west coast of North America in the 1600s and offered panoramic views of the coastline. On a clear day, you can see as far as 50 miles up and down the shore, sometimes to the coast of California. We got hungry. We stopped and got fish and chips in the town of, where the heck are we, Port Orford? I saw the fish and chips, and Liz was like, that place has great reviews online. So we're like, it's like local rockfish. I haven't tasted it yet, but it looks legit. Good? Mm -hmm. This is very good. Fish was super fresh, and it was locally caught. We always love that. I don't know if 4.6 is generous, but a four, mm-hmm. And these french fries are stellar, so. Okay, 4.2 french fries. <laughs> One of the must-do activities on our Oregon Coast road trip is exploring the tide pools. All of Oregon's coast beaches are free and open to the public, so there's tons of places that you can explore the tide pools. We ended up coming to Coquille Point, which is right in the downtown city center of Bandon, and it's like a seven-minute drive from our campground, which makes it super convenient. They say coming around two hours before peak low tide is the best time to go, because that way you can kind of see the water as it reveals all of the different creatures and critters. Just make sure to check the tide charts if you're gonna come do this because the tide changes every single day depending on where the moon is at. It also changes on your location along the beach. But yeah, I think it's gonna coincide with the sunset here. So we're like checking off two, two stones. What does it say? Two birds with one stone? Sure. Getting big bangs for our buck here. Let's go explore. You're tiptoeing around nothing right now. Really? There's water everywhere. You gotta be really careful with the waves. They will come and get you. I think the water comes up like at least probably six feet from where it's at today, which is insane to me. And I also just have no idea how these animals are able to live outside of the water for so long before they like go back to their natural habitat. It's incredible. You mean before the habitat comes back? Yeah, I guess before the habitat comes back, you're right. And this is also an amazing place for birding. This is where puffins come to nest from May through early August that you can see. This is a really spectacular spot. seal puff was super cool. I think that is the closest we've gotten to a seal in the wild. When we came up the California coast, we didn't vlog it, but we saw several seals on the beaches there, but they were kind of like really far away. Of course, we saw seals in Iceland, but those are like far. 
So to see one like right there, we kept our distance just because we didn't want to scare them. Supposedly the seal pups will stay kind of close to the beach while their moms go out and hunt and they frighten easily. So if you ever do see a seal on the beach, even though you may want the shot and get close and it feels like you can get close, like leave them be, give them space. And don't pick up the starfish. This is like nature in its wild. Leave it as you found it. Dennis is finishing things up outside because we are heading out today to our next campground along the Oregon coast. We didn't show you much of our stay here at Bullard State Park because honestly, it was a little bit disappointing. I think it was just that we had high expectations. We thought we were gonna be getting a beachfront campsite, which this is not. The campground itself is rather packed in here. It was super noisy. We had like kids screaming, waking us up every single day. So it was not our favorite stay, but our next campground is beachfront. So it's about a two and a half hour drive up the coast today. We're not gonna be stopping at too many stopovers just because the parking lots are super small. So that's one thing that you need to keep in mind if you plan to do your own RV trip here. Big rigs can do this drive, but it would be extremely difficult. A lot of the signs said they don't recommend things over 30 feet. A lot of spots will even say that if you're three axles, you're not allowed to be on the road. So it's definitely something that you have to consider because it's a really windy ride to get out there. It's beautiful, but it's not for all rig types. Dennis is definitely, um, Loved the views, but not exactly loved the drive. So we're gonna get a move on it. Get ready for some beach camping. Oh my, 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 oh Found someone alone, I think I just lost the way to go Out here underneath the sun and stars and sand I'll give it all back just to get to hold her hand again I got This is what I'm talking about. This is beachfront camping at its finest. We are literally steps from the beach at our campsite. We can hear the waves crashing. We're also close to a lot of attractions in the area. We passed seal caves coming up here. There's also Cape Perpetua nearby, which is a really popular destination. They have tons of cool tide pools and water features to experience at low and high tide. So I think that's the goal for today to just kind of get on the scooter and go explore the area. One of the most popular places to visit in Cape Perpetua at high tide is Spouting Horn and Thor's Well. These two natural geologic features put on a show twice a day as the tide comes in. Spouting Horn, an ocean geyser, shoots water through a small hole which can reach meters into the air. Just on the other side is Thor's Well, a gaping hole in the basalt rock that becomes engulfed with water during high tide or rough storms. As the waves recede, the water quickly escapes through the hole, appearing as if it's being swallowed. absolutely mesmerizing to watch the waves come and go, and each crashing wave that was bigger than the last reminded us just how powerful the ocean is. Thor's Well was one of our favorite stops and is an absolute must visit on an Oregon road trip. You can't come to the Oregon coast without getting clam chowder. I mean, it's like a thing. Look at that cheesy goodness. Luna's is highly reviewed on Google. It's in Yahats, which is like five minutes from where our campground is, and it was on our way home from Thor's Well and the spout. So. We stopped. We're enjoying some beers. We got fish and chips. Mine ended up having extra stuff. They added like three different types of cheeses. And they also added bay shrimp to it. Mm. So it's like clam chowder on steroids. Wow. And it's delicious. Dang. Ooh. Oh my God, don't get that on me. Mm. Perks of being at a beachfront campground is that you can just walk a few steps from your RV wine in hand to watch the sunset. I'm not gonna lie, we need a little walk on the beach anyways, cause that meal was delicious, but I feel like I'm half dying inside. <laughs> Dennis napped, blood sugar went woo! So a walk is in order. really 
is one of the things that I personally love the most about RV life that I don't think we highlight enough. We always show you the beautiful places and it looks like we're having this big vacation, but things we didn't show you today would be our pee bucket overflowing and Dennis having to scrub our floors because we forgot to check our composting toilet. Despite all of that, we're here. This is how we get to end our day. Wild blackberry season. Liz is stealing all the local blackberries. There's plenty to go around. Uh -huh. It is everywhere in Oregon. The key is they have to like fall off the bush naturally. If you pull and there's a little resistance, it's not ready yet. How is it? It's cool. A lot of the same stuff we already saw in Bandon, but like the rugged coastline up here is definitely very different. I'm hoping I will see a, a new to branch or a sea slug. We haven't seen any of that yet. Whoa! The tide is coming in quick. So we have to get going. I think we might be even trapped here. We're gonna have to climb back up on the rocks to get out. This is nuts. So it's actually less windy today, but there's way more fog and the tide is like two foot higher than it was yesterday. So right where we were hanging out around the rim of Thor's well, like we were literally within five to eight feet from the rim, like dangerously close. We could not be there today because the, the waves are just crashing way over it. It's totally wetted out, like, it's nuts. Oh man, they're gonna get wet. <laughs> we're super lucky because we got a three night stay. So we're 10 minutes away from Cape Perpetua and all of the rad overlooks along 101. So we've come back a few times each day to see it at high tide, low tide, and it's been, crazy different every single time. It's been a couple days over here because you know one day it could be completely fogged out, can't see nothing, and the next day it could be beautiful and all of the different levels of that in between. So we're gonna keep you on your toes. This is gonna be my favorite dining experience uh, of the Oregon coast. That's not what you just said. I know. I'm so glad we waited for this. The Hots Brewing wasn't open until the day we were leaving, of course. So we like prolonged our checkout and then we kind of like just parked across the street until they opened. And we came here to grab a beer, which their beers are fantastic. I'm drinking an Imperial Stout that has cacao nibs and a little bit of cayenne. It's delicious. And they also are farm to table, which are like, you add beer and farm to table into one and you've literally created our heaven. They have like homemade flaxseed crackers. We just got a salmon dip. Dennis got a brisket sandwich with homemade barbecue sauce and house fermented sauerkraut. And I ended up getting like these lion mane, which that's a type of mushroom. Crab cakes, they have like a black garlic aioli on top. I mean, come on guys. Fun fact, red pepper has more vitamin C than an orange. So eat some red peppers. It's so refreshing to actually have like a healthy food. We eat a lot of garbage on the road. If you didn't see the other food that we've eaten this week, it's like all fried, all french fries. These are things we do not normally eat. We always feel pretty crappy after. So to be able to actually eat something that's really yummy and healthy and won't make us feel like shite is really refreshing. I wish places like this existed everywhere. This should be the norm. Sadly, it's not. No doubt. They're only open from like Thursday to Sunday. So if you come to your hats, it's well worth it. If they, if you're here during that window, if you can push it, make it happen. Blown away. <laughs> Blown away. 
had some food in there, I think I still do. Yeah. Your hats, your hats. Your hats. Yeah.